Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I teach, motivate, and inspire by interviewing special guests like the one that I have coming up today. She is a singer, country singer, artist, and songwriter, Lady Redneck. Lady Redneck played in her family band when she was young. The name of the band was Dusty Boots. It performed all over the Northwest and sold 40,000 CDs in their career. Lady Redneck just released a single in June called Identity Truck. So we're going to be talking to her about her life and how she got into music and anything else she wants to talk about. Lady Redneck, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. It's so great to be here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? I would love to do that. Um, So... Yes, I um, grew up in Idaho in a really small town and grew up playing music. It's always been a part of who I am. I love all kinds of music. I love every genre of music. And um, I think when you really love music, then it's just easy to do. So I am uh, I live in Texas now. I'm playing country music. I write country music. I write things that I write from experiences that I have or that really happened. So it makes it real, I guess, instead of just a lot of the crazy stuff sometimes you hear in today. And I don't know. I just love people. I love doing music. And it's just, I feel like it's a blessing from God to be able to do what I love. Well, why don't you tell us about how you got started into music? And I know you play a lot of instruments as well. And tell us about your family band, Dusty Boots. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I would love to do that. So, um... You know, my my parents both were always in bands when I was growing up. So when I was young, I remember always having a babysitter. They were always playing at gigs and stuff. And then as soon as we were, as soon as I was six, I started taking piano and guitar. And um, then in fourth grade, I started learning the violin. But my my family, like as soon as us girls were old enough to like hold instruments, pretty much, my dad started putting us in talent shows at first, and then. We started doing shows, and then we joined the fair circuits, and pretty soon we were doing weddings, corporate events, and kind of traveling all over the Northwest just doing music, and it was it was great. My dad played the guitar, and besides that, it was an all-girl band, so we were always like hammering on him. You know, he was kind of the butt of our jokes a lot, but he seemed to like it. I don't think he minded too much, so it was, it was me and um, two of my sisters, and then we had a girl drummer that we kind of adopted into the family and she's super awesome and honestly we just had a blast we did like for the fair circuits well and even like the corporate events everything like just depending on what kind of music they wanted to hear that's kind of what we played so we just had we just had fun one of the things that we would do in in some of the shows we do for fairs that we'd, we'd be playing an instrument and then halfway through the song we'd switch and then we'd switch again so we were constantly like changing instruments or like if it was a country bluegrass, we would do clogging along with it. It was like we just did whatever. We just had fun. And some actually, it's actually some of my favorite memories with my family growing up. It's just playing an old family band. <laughs> well, talk about the type of music that you play and sing now, because I listen to your music and it definitely sounds a little different or a lot different than the country music that you might hear on the radio. So kind of tell us, did you invent your own style or how did you come up with a style that's different than what you hear on the radio and in the top 40? You know, I feel like it was kind of a little bit of an evolution just as an artist, maybe kind of developing my own style. I feel like, like uh, when I, like growing up, you know, I did tons of cover songs, even though I've always written my own stuff. I never dared put out any of my music or dared. So it was always like sounding like other people. And I was actually trained in college, like singing classical, like singing like opera music. Like I sing all genres of music, but I just, I feel like so many people on the radio today kind of sound all the same. And I wanted to sound, I guess I wanted to sound different and just be different. And so 
I didn't purposely try to do that, but I think just because my writings, the way I write my music, it's just kind of a simple, like almost a simpler time, like almost a 70s vibe in some ways, and just kind of a, I don't know, it just kind of evolved into that, and, and it, it's basically my personality, so <laughs> I feel like that I didn't mean necessarily to sound quite as different from some of the top 40, but it's just kind of, I guess, how it's, how it's turned out, so. So tell us about your favorite artists to work with, whether they're famous or not, and talk about the big tours and the exposure that you have had during your music career to work with a lot of people, be around a lot of people, or, you know, perform in front of a lot of people. Yeah, you know, growing up, like, just performing in front of a lot of people, I, it... I think when you grew up with it, like, you don't really think about it. You know what I mean? When it's always a part of who you are. And so it's like, I guess, like, for me, like, the bigger the crowd, the I, I love the synergy of it. I love the energy of big crowds. And so, like, the bigger the crowd, I almost feel like I just feed off of it. And um, my show gets better. My game goes up. <laughs> so um, any chance that I have to play, like, the bigger shows, I really enjoy that. Um, I haven't been doing live music over the last few years. Now that, I mean, we were getting ready to do a tour when, and then COVID hit last year. I was really excited about that because I would actually taken some time off of like live shows just because I, I, to be a mom and just to like give time to my kids. And so it was like when like my little girl was old enough that she started going to school, I thought, okay, now it's a good time to to start touring and stuff. And so I'm hoping actually this year to be doing a lot of live shows and, and get a tour going as well and just really have the opportunity to connect with fans and, and do some great shows. Man, I just love performing, so. So do you play with a band or do you sing with music or how do, how do you do your thing? So with, okay, so it's really interesting you're asking that. Um, so, you know, growing up, I always played with band, and I, you know, if it wasn't the family band, like in college, I was in an alternative rock band. I was a bass player. I played in another band um, that was like an all-girl band again. So, like, I've been, I've always kind of done the band thing, but when, five and a half years ago, when I put my original stuff out, you know, I moved here down to Texas. I really hadn't connected with very many musicians, and it was just kind of like, so I just thought, let me just get in the studio, see what happens if I put my music out there. And at the time, I didn't have a social media following. I didn't really have anything. Nobody really knew who I was down here. And so I kind of didn't know what was going to happen. And then it just kind of evolved to where, like, my first, well, the first song I put out, um, I had some, like, I put it out there. And I, then I had some, like, indie stations saying, hey, we really like this song. We want to play it on our station. And I'm like, sweet. And so then it evolved to... You know, getting a Facebook page, getting social media started, and then it evolved to crowdfunding so that my fans were uh, taking care of all my recordings and and kind of more into the business side of it. But all that time, like just since I was trying to you know spend my time more being a mom, I just like the music was um, growing more and more. But now that I'm um, so now that I'm just finally ready to tour, I actually prefer to to play with a full band. And I have done some shows lately where I was full band. Um, I did one in June that we recorded actually into a DVD and did a big concert. Um, but quite honestly, I'll probably just to kind of get my local thing going, I'll probably just venture out and just like do some smaller ones, just me and like my guitar. And then uh, like on, you know, when I get hired to do the bigger shows, I always go full band just because I like the energy of the band. I mean, even if I'm doing House of Blues, I always just bring, like, the full band. I just like having <laughs> more energy, I guess. So. Well, do you have any upcoming projects? Or actually, tell us about your upcoming projects and tell us about the song Identity Truck that you just released in June. Is that for a new album or just something yeah. you put out? Yeah, so the system that I do is, like, okay, so... First of all, I've had some labels contact me, but I haven't, like the deal hasn't kind of been sweet enough. Um, and part of it too is like, I don't want to change. I don't want to sound like everybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. So I just, like, I'm kind of doing my own thing, right? So 
my fans are are my label. They pour, they pay for. I crowdfund once a month, and they pay for me to go record my music. Um, my fans actually set up gigs. They like they're super, super, super supportive. And so with I dented your truck, it was it was a song that I wrote um, from an experience I had, unfortunately. <laughs> and so that one was one that I just you know it was fun. I felt like a lot of people could relate to it, so I decided to release it and. Yeah, so I released that one in June. I've actually got another one coming out in September, and I usually, I usually release, I try to release one closer to every month. Or I mean, I, I've been off for this last year a little bit, just I've had a lot of different projects going on. But that one was just doing so well, like that I decided to to you know put a little more PR on it and promote it a little bit more, and just kind of see how it did, which. Kind of surprised me. I don't know that I feel like it's my best song by any means, but it's just one that people can smile at and like think, oh, that's cute. That's fun. You know what I mean? So anytime I can put a smile on somebody's face, I like that as well. Well, talk about the concept of identity truck and tell us why you decided to write it. I know you said it was because of a situation. So if you don't mind, just tell us the concept <laughs> behind it. Yeah. So, oh, gosh. This is a, this is actually humiliating, but okay. So I drive a truck, and um, I was at Chick Fil A, and like the Chick Fil A that's by our house, literally is the most efficient Chick Fil A in the whole world. You know how they're just they, they've got it down to science. And so I was in like the far le left lane, and they're like, "Oh, you have to go between behind the right truck over in the third lane over, or whatever." And um, I went to pull over, and I didn't know that there's a pole right there. And so as I like, as I was turning right to join into the other two lanes, like literally I heard this squeak, you know, there's like a million people around me. I was just, I was so mortified, but basically, um, and that was about four months ago that I did that. And it just brought back all the feelings of when I actually dented, like right after my husband and I got married, I totally dented his truck and I felt so bad. And so it kind of brought back all those feelings of just how how traumatic that was for me and how bad I felt and how I just wanted to make it up to him. And so that's the song literally came just from feelings that I had from <laughs> tenting my husband's truck. So well, that's so interesting. That's yeah. So it's as bad as real as can be exactly. So <laughs> well, tell us, give us some contact information. How can we connect with Lady Redneck? I know you have a pretty big Facebook following, but tell us all the links that you're on and your website yeah. and anything else. I would love to. So on Instagram, I'm at Lady Redneck Music. Beware of fake people on Instagram, especially. <laughs> I'm not going to send you like messages with like tons of hearts and stuff. Just <laughs> it's crazy, crazy how Instagram does that, right? Like all these crazy people. I'm also on Twitter and it's Lady Redneck -y. Um, I've got a few videos on YouTube and I'm getting ready to kind of work a little bit harder on that. I've actually hired a company to get some music videos done. Um, and then I'm also on, I'm on TikTok. I haven't done a ton there yet, but I'm really digging TikTok. My problem is if I get on there, it's like hard to get off because I get so addicted to those clips. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, I'm on all the social media and then my website, you can just go to ladyredneck.org ladyredneck.org and sign up to be on my email list and I do send out regular emails and I'll give away free music I'll give like I, I tell stories it's like totally not spammy I'll tell things about my life if, if you care to know <laughs> and then um, my other website ladyredneckmusic.com actually has like all my cool t-shirts and like a lot it has a lot more merch it has packages it has fun stuff like that so where can people purchase your music they can so on my website you can buy my okay so you can buy all my cds and it's amazing to me how many people buy cds i absolutely love it if you buy it off my website ladyredneckmusic.com um then i'll i'll sign it for you and if you have any requests like if you want me to write to so and so or whatever i can totally do that if you buy it like off amazon or somewhere else like that like it's sent directly from them so i can't but if you buy it off my website i'll sign it well, do you have any final thoughts before we close it out? Um, yeah, yeah, final thoughts. Um, I just, you know, I love the fact that the internet has kind of leveled the playing field and it's allowed musicians 
different sounding ones, you know, all different people to just really get their music out and, and, and kind of connect with other people. And so I just, I'm, I guess I just want to say how grateful I am to everybody that supports my music and that plays my music. And like, I really mean that sincerely because I know that there's like a sea, literally a sea of other musicians out there and other singers. And so like, it, it really means a lot to me, just, you know, the support. So I just want to say thanks. Well, Lady Redneck, I would like to take this time to thank you for joining me. It is absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And I would also like to tell listeners to follow, rate, review, and share after listening to this episode. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.